Long ago, in the misty past, lived a race of tiny beings. They were little things, unbearably cute and very clever. These neotinies lived in the shadows, avoiding all forms of danger. They loved family, peace, bacon, and waffles above all things, but they could be fierce, brilliant fighters when the occasion called for it. Our story begins on the day Miwimo was born. He was a little different from his parents. He grew up faster, he was even braver than usual, and he had an incredible sense of adventure, something unheard of amongst tinies at that time. As he grew up, he explored further and further from home. During one of his walks, Miwimo came across Joe, a horse who was sitting on the ground looking very dejected. Miwimo, like all tinies, was a compassionate creature. He approached the horse cautiously and struck up a conversation. After introductions, Joe told his story. My human and I were on our way home. Orcs attacked us. They dragged my human off towards the mountain. What's a human? You've never seen a human? Help me get mine back and I'll show you. And so began the first recorded tiny adventure. They found the orcs in the dead of night. They were in luck. The human was alive and tied nearby. I'll sneak around behind and untie the ropes. What language does the human speak? Miwimo asked. He'll understand you, said Joe. Tell him I'll be on the beach behind the mountain, but most of all, just hurry up and be careful, little fellow. They'd love a bite of you, too. Miwimo ran around the back of the mountain and snuck up behind the human. He whispered the plan as he loosened the ropes. The orcs were staring off into space and talking about how to eat their catch. Miwimo and the human swiftly made their getaway. As they ran, the orcs' voices suddenly became louder, but they were arguing with each other, paying no attention to anything except their own opinions, each trying to bully the other into a meal of his choice. They found Joe on the other side of the mountain, just as he said he'd be. Joe and the human thanked Miwimo and invited him to come to their village for a feast, but Miwimo had to get home. He didn't want to worry his friends and family. Thanks, Miwimo, said Joe. You really saved our bacon. Miwima's ears perked up, but he could see that nobody had any bacon, so he didn't say anything. The human was also thanking the tiny. I've never seen so much courage in such a small package, he said. When you're ready, you come to my village by the Smoky River, and we'll have a big feast and a good visit. Miwima said goodbye and rushed off. He really was late. He ran off in the direction of home, and Joe and the human went their way, too. Meanwhile, back at the campfire... I said no cooking. Fresh raw flesh. I want that bird taste, grr. Fresh. Staring at the place where the man had been sitting, the little orc said, It's gone. It's gone. The only way to end this argument is to eat now. Quick. What? You idiot. You didn't tie it tight enough. The ropes were making his flesh bleed. They were so tight. What are you talking about? I tied him fine. You let him get away. Me? You brainless bird brain bohunk, it's all your fault. We could have been eating him by now. Girl, no, you want to talk about cooking.